Hello, and welcome to Self Publishing Insiders with Draft to Digital. Today, uh, the day that we are uh, doing broadcasting this live is September 29th, 2022. My name is Mark Leslie Lefebvre, and I am the Director of Business Development with Draft to Digital. And if you're a longtime listener or watcher of this program, you may remember uh, Jim Azevedo from uh, a previous episode. But, Jim, um, Let's let's make sure for anyone who doesn't know who you are, uh, your title. What what do you do at Draft to Digital? Uh, <laughs> I'm the corporate <laughs> I'm the corporate communications manager at Draft to Digital. Okay, cool. Having come via the Smashwords acquisition, acquisition. And you were you've been at Smashwords almost from the very beginning, right? So like that that is like well over a decade. Yeah, well, not well over, but almost. Uh, well. Just past a decade, so since okay. 2011, so 11 years. 11 years uh, doing right. that with, and so you performed a role very similar to, you know, you would go and talk to authors. I think we met the first time in the, oh my God, 2013. Yeah. I think it 12? was 2013 down in the dungeon of the Javits Center in New York. Yeah, so we, you had, uh, you were at the Smashwords table. I was at the the Kobo uh, table. Uh, That's back right. Then. So that was That's way right. back in ancient history <laughs> in ancient New history. York. And I think the DDD guys were there as well. That's yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm pretty me. sure that's when I m must have met Dan for the first time yep. uh, as well, way back when. So ancient, ancient days. But we just got back uh, with several of our awesome colleagues. We just got back from <clears throat> and uh, thoughts and prayers to all of our friends in, uh, in Florida who we just left. I mean, because just where we were at the trade winds at Novelist Inc., uh, they just got walloped yesterday, Saint and, and I've heard speech. from a few people who are safe, but um, yeah, we were there last week, right? It, right, and it was terrifying to see that cone of the of the hurricane's path approaching that area where we just were. Yeah, and knowing that so, we have so many friends back there still. I know, I know. So we're keeping an eye on their friends. We're sending right. them well wishes, and and hope hope everyone is doing okay. But last week. Um, at Novelist Inc., uh, we we you know reconnected, uh, you know met as the for, for the first time as colleagues, yes, of the same did. company, <laughs> <laughs> along with uh, several several other awesome uh, draft to digital folks. But um, I, I think before we get into that, th there were some trends, there were some things that we picked up from talking to the authors at Novelist Inc., right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's so nice to go to um, a conference and be an attendee and just soak up all this information that's that's coming at you versus you know worrying about presentations and, not, and other things. But as anybody knows who's gone to lots of conferences, when you when you go to a conference and you're taking in all this information, you start to worry like, what am I going to forget? But then over the next few days, the things that were really impactful or really important start to bubble up to the top of your brain. And one yeah. of the things that stands out to me, Mark, was um, how much talk there was about direct sales and how important it is to authors. Yeah. No, that's definitely been a growing uh, thing, uh, which is which is why, I mean, that is an important development that we're gonna be adding to Books to Read, awesome. the ability to add additional links and additional stores. Mm -hmm. um, but so I had, to, and I picked this up from our colleagues over at Kobo's nice little pocket um, a notebook that I could just keep right here, nice and handy so, so I could have my hands free to shake hands and have a <laughs> coffee in one hand, because that's all I drank when I was there was coffee. But um, I have, I think, honestly, about 60 pages of notes from Not Less Inc., oh, um, uh, which, which is just amazing. And like you said, there's so much to digest, um, yep. so much to digest. But also, I've been going through the stats, and I know that's potentially why some people are tuning in, is I've been going through the stats for Q1 and Q2 mm -hmm. of 2022. So basically sales from January all the way to June. Did I do the math right? That's six months, right? Yeah, something like <laughs> so, that. <laughs> to the end of June. Uh, and we do have some stats beyond that, but I just wanted to look at a snapshot because what I was doing was looking cool. at um, what were what were the sales? Now, now, the systems, because our systems at Smashwords and draft to digital right. are not yet merged, I want to compare apples to apples. So if I go back and compare sales from last year to this year, obviously when you bring in the Smashwords sales, it's going to, change them. It's like, wait, yep. they're way up. Right. Hey, what's <laughs> so, going on? so I was trying to compare apples to apples. So I was looking only at the draft to digital sales. Okay. So I can have that ring fence of, you know, Q1 and Q2 of this year compared to last year compared to the year before. Mm -hmm. But Jim, do you remember something odd happening in, in Q of 2020, uh, the first quarter of uh, 2020? Anything, anything strange happen in the world? I think um, there was this virus, I, I think that, yeah. And it was an, it was a, a computer virus that spread and <laughs> people clicked on, right? 
<laughs> human human virus this time, but the world started the world started to shut down as the apocalypse started taking over. Oh my God! Yeah. So um, we saw uh, across the board we yeah. saw digital book sales see the the most ridiculous growth since Absolutely, what people positively. often call the, the Kindle yeah. cold rush days, right? 2009 to 2014 was right. You know, triple digit growth for eBooks. But back then the numbers were small, so triple digit was. <laughs> <laughs> but but then the first time since then, in March of 2020, our growth was ridiculously high. It was back to tri triple digits on big numbers. Yep. So because um, everything was shut down, you couldn't go out to stores, and people I think started either discovering the joys of digital downloads the first time, or started rediscovering the convenience and the flexibility of just sitting you know, on their couch in their pajamas, <clears throat> browsing for a book and downloading that next book in a couple of minutes. Exactly. I remember the fear of getting a physical book from the library or the bookstore, and maybe it would have something attached to it that would make us sick, right? Do you remember bleaching things when you brought them oh, yeah. into the house? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put them in a staging area so that it can sit it there for two days. Right. But um, but I remember picking up my 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 phone and I had the Libby app, and Libby is how you would get access oh, to OverDrive. Best. So we distribute yep. to OverDrive, which goes to the libraries, and so you connect your library card, and I could get eBooks instantly. And we saw huge library growth sales. Again, that was an unprecedented library sales mm -hmm. growth. So I'm saying this to set the stage because we're in an environment right now, uh, September of 2022, uh, two years plus, two, almost two and a half years mm -hmm. since uh, the world changed dramatically. And we're looking at sales. It's challenging when you see the, the significant growth between 2019 and 2020, when you compare, uh, and 2021 was also a year of growth, right? Not mm -hmm. not quite as dramatic as 2020, but there were lockdowns. People were stuck inside reading. Sure. Hey, what am I going to do by myself? Well, I'm going to read, right? I'm going to stream right. things. Exactly. I'm going to do TikToks. So I'm going to read. Right? So, <laughs> <Yep>. um, <clears throat> so what we did see, we did see that um, that growth. So so what we're what we're seeing is, and I'm going to share some some data that's going to show that. We year over year, when we actually look at Q uh, Q1 and Q2 from last year to this year, actually seeing a slight decrease. Mm -hmm. But the, that is compared to 2022. So what I did is I went back to normal times, <laughs> like we're getting back to <laughs> normal because times. Because here's something that happened this year: is this year, roughly around the same time between the beginning of March, <clears throat> maybe the middle of March and and, and April, mm -hmm. we saw something else happened. We saw isolation, lockdown, uh, crossing the border, you know, between the US and Canada and other countries, the restrictions were suddenly being thrown out. So so no more were people stuck at home having, you know, hey, reading is a great option. Suddenly, everyone was pent up with two years of I'm ah, going to run around, free, you know, yep. free willy and have a really good time, go lick everyone's faces, all the things <laughs> that we wanted to do, right. anything Maybe but buy not. books. So uh, Q1 started off really strong, and I'm going to share some of the numbers. But then <laughs> towards the end of Q1 and in beginning the Q2, we were having what you know, we call the, the pandemic relapse. We were having that rebound effect of, okay, I can go do other things now. I can go actually sit in a restaurant. I can mm -hmm. go hang out with friends like we, we did at the TK Get on bar. an airplane. <laughs> yeah. Instead of purchasing books. So we did see, and this is not just in indie author sales. This is across the board. We okay. saw a drop in sales um, compared to that. So that's why I'm I'm going to take a look at um, Q uh, Q1 and Q2 of 2019 Good. compared to now, so we can kind of feel okay. Now that we've stabilized after this giant spike, yep. Where are we? And and just so you know, we still are way ahead of where we were in 2019. But when we compare it just to those periods, you're going to see some some dips interesting yeah so <clears throat> so I, is that like a new normal mark would you say so like the numbers from the from the from the pandemic we all were isolated yeah digital books started to take off kind of went like this then we started hitting you know a bit of a plateau as we started coming out of isolation right so is this a new normal that we've reached that's still a bit higher yeah, the, the plateau is higher now compared to yeah. you know uh, you know Q one and Q two last year. They're down compared to last year, but they're still sure. up in general. So you're still up at a much higher rate. Because the other thing you got to remember is there yeah. are people who let's be honest, and we will look at industry stats. 
Um, and I know it's hard for indie authors to believe this. They, they, they probably like scoff at it and go, that can't possibly be true. But this is why we believe that, you know, uh, large traditional publishers, we believe they don't, uh, you know, that, that, that they don't know what's going on. They're not even looking at ebook sales because ebook no. sales are roughly 20% of what they make. And, and in general, most people still have never read an ebook, right? Even though we had this great opportunity in 2020, yep. March 2020 was a great opportunity to discover the magic of ebooks. <laughs> yep. And still, even though it was triple digit growth, I bet you if you ask the average person who's not part of the author community, obviously authors know about ebooks, but yeah. if you ask the average reader, uh, they're probably gravitating towards print. And I'm going to share sure. some stats from traditional publishing so we can kind of set the stage. You ready to hear some? I'm of ready. That? All right. All right. I got, I only have about eight pages of notes here. So, and I do have visuals. I have some slides, so it's Sweet. not just going to be looking at me reading off a page. Um, <laughs> so, so again, we've had the opening up uh, lockdown stuff. So, so BookNet Canada. So I'm, I'm in Canada. I'm the, I'm the token Canadian on the draft digital team. BookNet Canada is kind of like um, a Nielsen book scan uh, made up of just book nerds yep. who love data analytics. So think about people like Dave Cheston and Alex Newton. People like that all work there and they're big giant so book sharp. nerds, right? <laughs> so, uh, and BookNet Canada collects data, sales data from uh, independent bookstores, chain bookstores, Walmart, Target, uh, there is no more Target here, but the, the Costco, all the major uh, book retailers in Canada. But it's only print book sales because uh, the only retailer that was willing to give them uh, data was Kobo. And none of the other ones wanted to. So they can't. They can't share the data because it's it's not meaningful if it doesn't come from at least three different sources. Gotcha. So um, and, and, and just just to reiterate, the data I'm sharing is going to be from sales reports from the draft to digital system. And that is going to include data that comes from pretty much every major retailer except uh, Google Play. In terms of ebooks, it comes from our library and it comes from our subscription services. So it comes so, from the collection. So it's not just one source, it's it's a variety. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll share a little bit of that. So BookNet Canada, uh, this is from a report that was published on September 23rd. Okay. Very good. Uh, it's, uh, so the first six months of 2022 were relatively stable uh, and sales were up 2% over the first six months of 2019. So again, they went back to 2019. So they're up 2% over 2019 because, again, the sales were down compared to yep. last year. Because one of the things we saw uh, both in the U.S. and Canada and probably in other countries uh, were independent bookstore growth. And uh, BookNet Canada talked about that, that one of the key trends that was fueling book sales was the opening of uh, new independent stores across Canada and the U.S. And so that meant more stores entering the market. And, and what I found um, is people championed local bookstores. That right? I mean, that alone is so interesting because when the when the pandemic first started, everyone thought, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to the to the indie bookstores? Yeah. And, and you would think, you know, uh, grocery stores, restaurants, people need to eat, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, pe people love to read, but people just got behind these small businesses. Absolutely. And imagine like, imagine the growth of independent bookstores during the pandemic, like the worst time <laughs> to, to start a business. <laughs> yeah. And yet people rallied behind them. They were doing yeah. curbside pickup. They were doing deliveries. Home deliveries. All kinds of great innovative yeah. things. I mean, yes, obviously Amazon sales went up because the everything store, you drop, you know, <laughs> ships well, the next day. Yeah. But that was an amazing thing to see. So, um, now, the interesting uh, stat from BookNet Canada is uh, front list sales are lagging. Now, for our listeners, what, what is a front list title? Oh, a, a front list oh. title is a book that's released today or tomorrow. <laughs> so a new, <laughs> a new, a new a best-selling author. Yeah, yeah front list would be new books that are published and, and backlist or anything. And, and usually in the industry, um, it's usually six months. So anything released okay. six months ago in, in, within the last six months is considered front list. Gotcha. And then previous to that is backlist. So what BookNet Canada tracked is that frontlist sales were lagging. And it says BookNet uh, data shows that starting in 2020, on online book sales eclipsed sales in physical bookstores. Now, this is in Canada. Okay. And I know that that's been a trend in the U.S. So you're seeing sure. some slightly varying. Now, that may just be because, let's be honest, the everything store in Canada is not yes. nearly as efficient as it is in the U.S. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not as easy to get stuff. Um, but uh, online now accounts for 55% of overall book sales. Um, and sales in physical stores represent 45%. 
Now, online sales favor backlist, says Noah Ganner, uh, who is the CEO of BookNet Canada, says, which along with inflation may account for a slight drop in the market share of frontless books, which fell to 24% in the first six months of the year, and they were 27% for the same period, 2021. And it reminds me of something I like to remind authors is that a book you have not read before is a new book. And backlist sales on online, especially when you have series, and we will be sharing some series data, that's a major thing. You put out a new front list book, and let's let's be honest. So I put out a new book in my series. Let's say it's mm-hmm. book six in a series, and I sell that. Okay, I'm selling it. Maybe I'm not selling as many as I would have a year ago. Yep. But I have five other books that are backlist, and so when my front list sales are up slightly, my backlist sales grow dramatically. Yeah. And the more you keep adding, the more your backlist is going to grow. And, and that's what we have seen with, you know, authors you talk to at Nink, right? Like how many of them were writing in series? Absolutely. And even for some of those best-selling authors, there are still, even if you're a bestseller, there are still millions and millions of readers who still have not yet discovered your book. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And that's the beauty. And that's the beauty of this, especially since most people haven't read an ebook yet. So we got to convince them how to get on a little digital only diet of books. Just so how can you how can you get more of those ebooks into your diet? And so right. so we might um, have some polls to help them with that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so Lou Aronica, uh, who is uh, a figure at Nink, uh, a popular figure who always does a summary at the end. Uh, I know Dan and I uh, stuck around the extra day um, so we could listen in and, and yep. participate and, and chat uh, a little bit more and learn a little bit about the summary and, and just get some updates from he uh lou comes um he's a publisher he's a, a small publisher very adept dynamic publisher mm-hmm. comes from decades of traditional publishing experience but he also is one of the one of those rare people in traditional publishing who really gets and understands indie yeah so he doesn't poo-poo like you know often indies will poo-poo publish traditional publishers and traditional publishers will poo-poo indie authors. He gets both sides. Okay. Uh, so I, I really like love his opinion. So he was doing a bit of a talk and he said, um, so the APP, the American uh, Publishers uh, Association of uh, American Publishers. I'm forgetting what the second P stands for. What is it? I'm- isn't it the AAP? American AAP. Sorry, I, I wrote American it down wrong. The AAP, the American Association, the Amer- Association. Show me American these curveballs, Mark. Something like that. All of these. What does <laughs> D to D stand for? Um, it shows a 0.08 percent decrease in units over last year. So, oh. and again, most of these sales are print. Okay. Right. So they're, they're focused. That's where traditional publishers live. Um, but what, one of the things he pointed out that, that I made a note of is that. Based on, and I'm not an ec- uh, economist and neither are you and neither mm-hmm. is Lou, but based on all signs and all of the things we're hearing from the experts is that we're probably uh, close to experiencing uh, the very first meaningful recession that we've had since the streaming era began. And here's why this is important. Historically, when you look back at history of book sales, mm-hmm. Books are one of the only products that are recession proof. But this is the first time we're going, going to be going into a recession, most likely, yep. where we have streaming. And what is a competition for reading? <laughs> right? Right. So, exactly. or as we saw, streaming led to book sales. Queen's mm-hmm. Gambit is a perfect example. A book published in the 70s and 80s suddenly became a bestseller because of streaming. Kate Bush running up that hill. How many decades later became a number one right. bestseller? Again, smart note to Indies. She kept her rights. <laughs> so she was able to make <laughs> that money. <laughs> Take heed. So that's an interesting. interesting thing to think about. So, but but one of the things uh, Lou reminded us of is that people who love books don't just like books. They don't just love books. They love books. And that's like giant capital letters, exclamation point out the wazoo. They define themselves as book people, as right. book lovers, and they they may even double down. On, yeah, it goes well, beyond a want or a desire. It becomes a need. Like I have. It to. is. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I have that sickness. I love well, it. It's I'm part happy. of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it? I'm gonna buy uh, something to eat, or I'm just gonna, you know, nourish myself with this great book that I just bought. Right. I nourish myself with books more often than not. Yep. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I, I suspect that. And, and, and I'm just saying that because when we're looking at the trends, uh, typically uh, September 
through December is the strongest for book sales. When in, in traditional book selling, you know, having managed bookstores, we would operate in the red. We would lose money. We'd be mm -hmm. spending more in rent and, and employees and all the utilities than we would make. And we would make all of our money for the year between September and December. Right. Wow. So that's kind of a pattern that you see in um, that's a kind of a pattern that you see in uh, uh, online sales and mm -hmm. in ebook sales, as you do see uh, the trend of uh, like sales said. going up. So we're, we're likely to see um, to start to see those sales go up. However, as we're going into potential recession and interest rates and things like that are going up, that could have an impact. But I'm still very optimistic that we're going to see those sales increase based on 30 years in the industry. <laughs> so, totally agree. Could not agree more. Um, so that that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, and, and again, Lou reminds us that uh, traditional publishers only make about 20% of the revenue from ebook sales. So here's the thing that I think about as an indie author. When you think that and we had some dramatic, uh, right? Like I've always said, you know, when talking to people about ebooks is an ebook does not have to be 300 pages bound between two pieces of cloth. Right. Ebooks can be <laughs> so much more. They can be shorter, or smaller, they can be whatever. They're way dynamic. Every ebook is a large print book. And all the things that a lot of indie authors know already, traditional publishers ignored because they were busy shipping dead trees around and storing them right. in warehouses, right? In March of 2020, was the opportunity for them to actually open their eyes to the right. possibilities if they stopped thinking that ebooks were going to cannibalize print sales. Yes. And my fear as an indie author is if they ever actually, and they didn't get their act together, they didn't get their smarts together then, but they're going to one day figure this out, especially as we are seeing print, uh, the price of print increasing, the price, the cost of paper. Uh, shortages are very, mm -hmm. they're still a major issue. Uh, shortages for, for print supply. Publishers may one day have no choice but to get with the ebook program. And that means us indie authors need to be that much more adept because right. we've kind of had the playing field to ourselves, right? Yeah. And, you know, take notice, indie authors, as you listen to what Mark's saying here, like you have this competitive, this huge competitive advantage, especially in terms of your pricing, because the largest traditional publishers in the world cannot compete with you on the price of your ebooks. You have so yeah. much more flexibility than they yeah. ever will have. Exactly. So I want to make sure that indie authors are positioning themselves to be able to compete. And that's, I think, where potentially direct sales is a great opportunity. There's yeah. other options to earn more margin. Uh, they can still compete on price, but also not, maybe not necessarily so low. And I'm going to share some of that with some of the stats. So um, are you ready, Jim, to hear some of the, some of the, oh, hang on, I got to pop up the banner. This is exciting. <laughs> there we go. We're going to go into <laughs> 2022 Q1 and Q2 industry insights. I feel like All I right, need a little I, button for some like some kind of a sound wave or something. Yeah, like that. and uh, I do have some. Actually, you know, before I get into our draft to digital stats, I think maybe uh, one of the things I, for, I forgot to mention is when we were at um, Novelist Sync last week, uh, did you sit in on the, the session that Will uh, Degas from uh, Find A Way Voices did? Missed that one. No. So just a reminder that uh, Find A Way Voices is, is a partner of ours. Uh, we distribute... Uh, ebooks, we distribute print books, and we have a great partner for audiobooks. And that partner is Find Away Voices. And you can click your button over, uh, you know, when in your ebook, for example, to say make an audiobook. And what we'll do is we will port you into Find Away system, set up your book to save you having to rekey in that information. And they have ways you can either upload your audio files or there's multiple ways to get access to narrators if you're looking for audiobooks. So I wanted to share this because a lot of authors are thinking about audiobooks. So here's some of the stats from uh, Find Away Voices that uh, courtesy of Find Away Voices. And, and again, I'll pop up. Well, where's my little courtesy of Find Away Voices banner right there? Courtesy <laughs> of Find Away Voices. Um, and this is just sort of a look at the industry uh, from this is just a, a high level summary from Will's really amazing presentation. Uh, he was very nice to, to, to allow me to share this here. So I'll get rid of the. Um, uh, the banner, because I don't think you can see the full slide. Uh, but this is kind of what's happened uh, with audio. So this is audiobook sales uh, from our partner, Find Away Voices. And they distribute to 53 plus uh, library um, and retail platforms. Is this global, Mark? And global? this is global. This is yeah. global. This is all the places, right? Yeah. So the library sales, 26.59%. Uh, um, and this is without promotions. Wow. This is just generic sales. Mm -hmm. Retail subscriptions. So subscription meaning... 
you know, platforms uh, where like Audible, uh, Kobo has a subscription program. I think Barnes and Noble will launch one this year. So without uh, retail subscription is about uh, 37%. And a la carte. So a la carte is you don't uh, pay a monthly fee to get like a credit, but you mm -hmm. just buy the audiobook. And isn't it interesting that a la carte sales are almost equal, like 36.65% as opposed to 36.7%. really is. 7%. Yeah. So it's almost, uh, I mean, not quite a third, a third, a third, but look at the, the library growth has been dramatic for, for them because the library was not that high that long ago. So wow. you're seeing it starting to, to be like a almost, almost coming to like a, a thirds, right? For all three platforms, mm -hmm. meaning it's smart for authors to be in as many platforms as possible. Subscription services, a la carte services, library. And I say that because Spotify just opened up. Uh, Spotify now owns Findaway. Yep. And they opened up with a la carte. Uh, and, and a la carte with a discount that's the, you know, one of the most generous. It's it's on par with what you get from BNN and stuff like that. So it's a it's a decent, I think it's a 50 50 percent when you look at the the contracts there. This um, this this speaks to the to the advice we constantly give our authors, which is you know, put your books in all the places where readers go to find books. Exactly. Not just one or two places, all the places. All the places. Why not? You never know. Especially you right. want to be there to ride the wave, right? When it when it grows. Yep. <laughs> um, and then with promotion. Uh, so this is uh, with Findaway, you can set price, you can control your price at most mm -hmm. of the places except Audible. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can set do price promos on, on various retailers. So with promotions, you see that the retail a la carte jumps dramatically almost to 50 percent because that's obviously where the price promo happens Whoa. because libraries, it doesn't really change that much for them. And subscription, you're going to just go through the program as normal. So they kind of stay relatively the same. But with promotion, you see the retail. Um, Retail uh, a la carte jumps up, which is kind of uh, interesting to see. The other thing uh, that I think point. is important when you compare, uh, and this is another slide from, from Will's deck, um, the average promo pricing and discount. So this is just a look at, you know, if your retail price is between zero and, and $2.50 US, um, you know, with the average discount, this, you're just kind of seeing what those numbers are mm -hmm. in terms of the, the promo price, the average discount. So obviously if, if your retail price is, you know, like two fifty, the promo price on average is going to be 67 cents. And so this is kind of like with audiobooks, the price is going to be dramatically higher anyways. Right. So, so obviously these are just some of the different discounts, but this is the, the, the most interesting stat that we found was, this is the pricing based on the length, right? So short stories and, and novellas and stuff like that into zero, zero to three hours. Um, and and 10,000 words of text is roughly an hour of mm -hmm. audio. And so you're looking at this is the average pricing based on length. And this is across both. And the thing I love about Findaway is they're not just sharing independent uh, author's data because Findaway, the mother company of Findaway mm -hmm. Voices, also... As you hear the, the storm of the dogs running out the door right now because someone just came on. So uh, what you're actually seeing is uh, <laughs> find a way sharing database, not just on indie author titles, but titles from major publishers that they distribute for as well. So we're actually getting a wonderful mix. Like when I share the data later from draft to digital, it's pretty much indie author titles we're sharing. This is including uh, the big publishers as this well. This is so super interesting. If you yeah. think about all the work that goes into an audiobook. Yeah, all that work. And so you got to sell a lot, right? To, yep. yep. To make your money back. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, that was the stuff from Find Away Voices. Now you ready to dig into our stats, our sales? Yes. Okay, let's let's dig in here. Okay, so um so again, uh 2020 was dramatically higher than 2019. Yep. Yep. 2021 was also a very healthy growth over 2020 and we thought, okay, it can't this can't sustain. We can't keep growing like this. Can't and keep growing by double and triple percentage points forever. Yeah, it was it was, it was ridiculous. So we figured it's going to have to come back to normal, which we talked about. So, yep. um um so unit sales uh were down about 1% year over year. Uh, no, actually, sorry. This is unit sales in Q2 versus Q1 of this year. So the last, the previous, the, the second batch of three months compared to the first three months, we're down 1%. And this is just ebooks we're talking about, Mark? <clears throat> this is uh, this is our ebook sales over okay. uh, through, through draft to digital. We're okay. down about 1%. So again, we started off doing okay. And then as, as the world opened up and people stopped buying books as much, they've gone down 1%. Right. 
but interesting like one percent still puts us way ahead right. now revenue was down about five uh four point eight two percent again between q1 and q2 so again we're seeing that dip. we're, we're mm -hmm. hoping to see that come back up uh for q3 q4 of this mm -hmm. year um but this is the interesting thing, which is why I wanted to set the stage about that yeah. growth in 2020. So if when I'm looking at 20, 2019, compared to 2019, mm -hmm. our units have grown by 3.98%. Wow. So we're still ahead, right? Which is really, really good. And revenue, this is this is a cool thing. So, so that's about 4%, right? Mm -hmm. Revenue has grown by 9.9%. So wow. let's round these up. Units have grown by 4%. Revenue has grown by 10%. What does that mean? It means authors are pricing higher. Authors are getting more money for the products. So they're selling more units, right? They're selling 4% more units than before, but they're earning 10%. Wow. So this is exciting. What, I, what we have seen a little bit more of is there's the authors who are doing box sets. And they know that when they publish their box sets that go north of $9.99 mm -hmm. everywhere but Amazon, they can make that full 60% that they would get through draft to digital. And that's on all of our major retail platforms. So that's an exciting thing. More margin in your pocket, dear author. Um, that's <laughs> something I get excited about. <laughs> um, right. The next set is, and this is interesting. So when we look across the board, across all of the different channels, mm -hmm. we're with the exception of, of some growth that we're continuing to see in libraries, which is very, very minimal growth this year. Overall, we're seeing a drop. Okay. Right. And at a lot of, a lot of the places right. um, and, and, and a drop of just a few, a few percentage points, right. Very similar to that 1% that we saw across the board. But do you know, Jim, do you know, Jim, I know Jim, <laughs> <laughs> do you know where the only place that we saw a growth and we saw a growth of get this 4.2%. And this is, this is January to August of 2022 this year compared to January of August, 2021. Any ideas where, we saw that growth almost like, you know, 4.4.26% 4. growth. Let me take a stab. Would it be print? No, my friend. It's mm -hmm. an ebook. It's an ebook platform. It's a retail ebook platform. It oh. is. Let me give you a hint. It is the world's largest repository <laughs> of indie author books out there. Let me see. Could it be Smashwords? My God. Ding, 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 ding. He wins the prize. Yes. Smashwords. And here's the, here's the thing I love about this. Smashwords. How much do authors earn when they sell through Smashwords? Yep, eighty percent of list. Eighty percent, twenty percent more. They make eighty percent of list. Jim, we have plans. We have. Oh yes, plans we have big plans. Earn more. Oh, yeah, we have plans. That'll be coming up in a future D 2 D live. But we <laughs> do have some merchandising plans. Megan will be involved heavily in getting nice. more merchandising space for authors. So think about that. More margin for authors on on one of the only retail platforms that saw significant growth compared to. A drop, which is really, really, really hanging. So there you go. And, and, really, and did you really know? Megan did you know that, there. Oh, sorry, Mark. Did, did you know that Smashwords is on its sixth consecutive year of growth, year over year? This is sixth consecutive year of growth, year over year. And so Smashwords is seeing growth even after we've set the stage that 2020 was a ridiculous so year. And bucking, it's still growing. Uh, right, it's bucking an overall industry trend. And we haven't even put the draft to digital titles in there yet. I know. Like, oh my goodness, my goodness me, this is going to be so exciting. So Can you see why we're so excited? Like <laughs> <laughs> priming the pumps. <laughs> um, uh, now I'm I'm, st I'm sticking on eBooks here. I'm sticking okay. on eBooks. Now it should be no surprise to anyone who's been paying attention to the book world since the inception of reading, but romance is um, uh, the worst selling category. No, romance is by <laughs> far, it's actually almost unfair to include romance because it takes such a big piece of the pie. But romance sales uh, accounted for the majority of our sales. Again, 55% mm -hmm. of units uh, and 55.06% of revenue. Now, the thing about romance is you, you know that the voracious readers are reading like three books a day. And stuff right. Like that. <laughs> right. So you, you've got to keep your prices low so you can just keep feeding those awesome, yeah. awesome. We love our romance readers. We love our romance authors. We love them both. Yeah. We love putting them together. So that's that's more than half the pie, right, is going to romance. So I don't write romance. So I don't want to be depressed. So I wanted to look at, so, okay, we know romance is number one. What are the other categories? And I have another visual. 
Isn't that exciting? Fantastic. Bring it up. Yeah, let's bring up the visual. So, so uh, romance, obviously, number one. But then the next highest categories are actually uh, mystery and detective. Oh, mystery and detective. Yeah. Um, a fantasy. And so these are sort of like the subcategories. So uh, fantasy. And, mm -hmm. and again, when I, when I have fantasy, like it's the high level, just like romance is all the categories. And I'll dig into romance yep. in a little bit uh, for romance authors to, to see what, what those subcategories are. Then women's fiction, right? Number five. That's kind of cool. Science fiction, action and adventure. So you're getting yep. a lot of the genres up top, right? Yep. Um, and then business and economics. Start dipping into the nonfiction titles there. Yeah, uh, nonfiction, which is great news for authors who write nonfiction. Then you're getting to thrillers. So thrillers different than mystery and detective, right? Mm -hmm. Those are domestic thrillers, et cetera. And then crime. So crime is a category that's more like a police procedural. Um, <clears throat> a, a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, what you would might call a thriller in, in, in the U.S. Uh, people might call crime, crime thrillers in the U.K. Gotcha. Then YA, obviously, because YA has a great crossover. Um, then you get into, so this is uh, interesting, uh, Christian fiction. Mm -hmm. um, self-help body mind and spirit health and fitness so i was shocked to see cooking so high on the list because i know you, you would think that you'd want that as a physical book but no i guess people are putting them on their on their ebook readers and just hanging out in the kitchen and doing more cooking um then uh fairy tales folk tales legends and mythology and lgbtq uh, well it's called lgbt in the in the bizac standard but yeah. it's it's that uh, category um it, it, then that the goes on off the screen, family and relationships, then fiction, family life, uh, fiction, historical. I mean, it just goes on and on and mm -hmm. on. There's 3,600 categories, but uh, those are the top ones that we saw. Uh, so that's kind of hopefully giving some hope. Um, Love it. Do you want to see some of the some of the breakdown? Like, let's dig into romance a little bit of more. Of course I do. I'll just dig into romance. All right, this one's a little prettier. This, uh, this is unit sales. So amongst the romance, within romance... Contemporary romance represents about thirty-five percent of of romance, and then um, I mean, there's about forty-six or forty-seven subcategories of romance. There's a ton. Uh, <laughs> and so the the rest, I just bought, lumped them into the rest because they're all like roughly one percent or less. But there's so many of them that it adds up to sixteen. So that's where you're seeing that. But then, so within you've got contemporary is huge. You've got suspense. You've got new adult, which is continuing to grow. Yep. Um, you've got action and adventure, paranormal shifters, billionaires still doing really, really well. Clean and wholesome, uh, still growing. Uh, uh, anthologies. And so anthologies and collections would be when authors get together, you know, hey, you buy book one of this series, book one of that series, get them all together where authors are collaborating. And again, we have that great payment splitting that you can use at draft to digital Absolutely. Um, and so you'll even notice, like, so you've got paranormal shifters is 4.31%, but paranormal general is 2.49%. So, I mean, really paranormal at the higher level would be, uh, I can't do the math in my head, but that's going to be a bigger number, right? It's going to be four, five, six, seven odd percent, which would actually put it close to suspense, like romantic suspense. Um, just quickly, unless is there anything else that's jumping out at you here? Well, one thing that that's kind of jumping out at me is, you know, I hear authors saying, well, where should I write? Like, what what market should I write to? I love romance. That's what I know. Um, maybe I should write toward contemporary because that's where it seems like the audience is. That's where the market right. is. But it looks to me, if you look at these numbers, that maybe the opportunity is not so much where everybody is, but maybe in some of these other more niche categories yeah. where that's that's growing. So you don't have to compete with thousands yeah. and thousands of other authors you're 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 the the, the playing field is a little bit more level for you there's more of an opportunity no I mean, that makes what, sense what do you completely think? yeah no no yeah because yeah you're 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 like oh i'm looking for military romance there i am and we were right. you met you were hanging out with ml buckman there right <laughs> at um, Nick? no for a little bit yeah that's yeah. right well matt yeah. matt writes uh, so many people uh military romance and 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 i know matt's making a pretty penny so here's the thing it may look like 2.5 percent and uh lgbt uh, may look like 2.14 percent but that is a big number <laughs> because you got to remember that romance is still half of our sales right. so even if it says billionaires is only 3.59 percent that 3.59 percent of 55% of our sales is a way bigger that's number a, than some of the other categories. That's a so, whopping number. Yeah. I'm going to flip it over to revenue. So this is unit okay. sales. And revenue is going to be pretty close, right? But you're seeing a little bit uh, little bit higher revenue in contemporary, for example. 
uh, the rest goes down a little, suspense goes up a little. So it's very, very similar. You've seen a very similar pattern, but yeah. it's just that it show that the prices are pretty close uh, in terms of the volume. So that was an interesting thing that I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> other stats, other right. stats. So let's go back into the high level stats uh, that I think are pretty, uh, pretty compelling, pretty exciting. So um, series units, you know, Jim, I've been in the industry for a long time and for, you know, 10 years I've been telling authors right in a series. Right, series. I, I only started to follow my own advice in 2020. And <laughs> ironically, I was I was uh, somewhat knew what I was talking about. Uh, but, so for for uh, for this quarter, uh, for the first yep. half of, of 2022, series units represented 75.48% uh, uh, of, of unit sales at draft to digital. Wow. And 75.94% uh, of revenue. So I'm I'm guessing a series works because because if somebody finds something they like, they want more of it. Yeah. And well, let's go back to romance for one second. Why yeah. do you think? Why do you think people like romance? Why do you think people need romance? Why do you think they love romance in their lives? So many reasons, but everybody loves a happy ending. Happy ending. Oh God, have we ever needed happy endings in the mm -hmm. last two years? Right. So mm -hmm. think about it. It's like okay, everything's scary. I don't know what's going on. I can open up a book and know that they will get together at the end yep. and we'll be in love at the end. So right. I, again, so that, and that's the other thing that happens with series books is I'm going to go hang out with people. I know people right. I like, and sometimes in series, it's, it's, it's not the same people. It's a world, right? Just think of romance series is yep. okay. This book is focused on this couple. And then book two is focused on the couple B and couple A has a, a, a you know a cameos or walk on roles, <laughs> so you right. know it's the same town. I think of Gansett Island from Marie Force, for example. It's all set on the same island, and there's different couples. Mm -hmm. um, but you get to see the happy endings, and, and you get to return to the the, the people you love. You, you get to return to Virgin River, for example. <laughs> right. So these readers are not just investing in the book; they're investing into those characters, into those stories, into those worlds that yeah. the authors have built. I mean, they're invested into this. And I think from the author's point of view, the authors worked really, really hard at developing real characters with heart and passion and soul okay. and settings. Yep. And they can they can re-leverage that IP. Yep. <laughs> <You> go, <laughs> well, that cousin I introduced in book one, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about their love story now. The one with the dog. Um, yeah. Or yeah. their murder mystery, or their thriller adventure, or yeah. whatever it is. Um, their romantic, yeah. you know, comedy adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, so series is really, really cool. Um uh, subscription units in uh, this year, the first half of this year, compared to, to 2019. I went all the way back to 2019 because it's just been consistent, slow growth. But sometimes, you know how you, you have a friend of the family, they have a they have a child and you haven't seen them in five years. And, and suddenly they go, oh, my goodness, you've like, grown. Right? How did that happen? And the parents <laughs> goes, what? Because they're, they're seeing like, you know, millimeters every every day or whatever, every week. <laughs> Yep. So when you look at subscription units, the lucky number 6.66% um, of subscription units for overall, 4.24% uh, of revenue. But back in 2019, subscription units were under 3%. It was 2.62% wow. uh, and 2.4% and for, for revenue. So, you know, we have seen subscription growth from uh, two, of, two of the specific platforms I can think of would be uh, Scribd. Yep. And uh, Kobo Plus, as they have dramatically expanded, and one only has to wonder if a company has dramatically expanded into what? What are they in nine different countries for Kobo Plus? I thought Is it was it's not that. working. Yeah. <laughs> is that... And, and Scribd, Scribd is a fun subscription service to play with. Yeah, they're they're very good about you know putting new titles in front of you. We saw that you read this. Changing this it out. Up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm thinking, and and I know from I was talking to the folks at Kobo at Novelist Inc. last week, mm -hmm. and 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 they were noticing that um, it's not cannibalizing their sales so much as it's new customers who've never read an ebook but are used to subscription services. Yeah. They're used to whatever, like Netflix or whatever. They pay a fee and they can, it's all you can read. And so they've seen a new customer come on board that says, "Oh, I can pay a monthly fee and I can I can read all these great books." So yeah, they're getting um, used to yeah. it because subscriptions go across so many different industries. It's not yeah, just exactly streaming and, and books. Um, uh, library sales are up nine point 
to 9.82 percent of units and i realized oh my god i was going on and on and on i forgot to share one of the most dramatic and exciting things Are you ready for it i'm so ready you mentioned print earlier jim i did i, I was getting ahead of myself i, was like, I oh, know so but this is so it? exciting <laughs> Twenty thousand units. we okay so draft to digital has seen um 220 percent growth and this year between january and august over 2021 it's more than three times the growth. But here's the interesting thing. We only have 20,000 titles in print. Only 2% of our authors have print books. Only 2%. And so can you imagine how much more that's going to grow when we actually, I mean, 2%, <laughs> that's, that's teeny, teeny, tiny. When we actually come out of beta? Yeah. So wow. uh, we did, we're, we're still in beta, but it's still yeah. perfectly active and available. But right Absolutely. now- Authors uh, outside of North America can get author copies. So if you live in the UK, you live in Australia, yeah. you live in Europe, you're getting copies not printed in, in the US and shipped you know, on a slow boat across the ocean. They're actually going to be print locally. So the, the, the cost savings is there. And if you're not in the draft to digital beta, um, you can go click on one of your books, click on the, the beta tab and say, please accept the beta. You'll probably be in the beta within a week or yeah. go to draftdigital.com slash print beta or just email us support right. at draft to digital. Um, that is really exciting. We are going to close this episode with a wonderful video from our good colleague, Kevin, with the smooth, Kevin's smooth voice. Kevin's Tomlinson. very white-ish <laughs> voice. <laughs> um, but Jim, I do want to, I want to say thank you for joining me in this um, medley of, of, of data that, you know, I, I haven't even gotten to the top. It was like 45 minutes in and I haven't even gotten through the top of it. Oh my gosh. But, well, I loved it. I loved being here. And don't worry, everybody. Kevin will be back. He's taking a vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so be sure to bookmark uh, d2dlive.com so you don't miss these weekly uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern episodes. Um, you can also, um, if you are interested, you can follow along over at the blog where we will have some notes uh, compiled from from this, uh, you know, posted to our blog. So we can have some of those stats and pretty pictures that you saw. And uh, again, thanks so much for joining. And Jim, thank you for hanging out with me uh, here today. It's been my pleasure, Mark. Thanks for having me. And now over to our good friend, Kevin. Ebooks are great, but there's just something about having your words in print. Something you can hold in your hands, put on a shelf, sign for a reader. That's why we created D2D Print, a print-on-demand service that was built for you. We have free, beautiful templates to give your book a pro look, and we can even convert your ebook cover into a full wraparound cover for print. So many options for you and your books. And you can get started right now when you sign up at draftdigital.com slash print beta.